everybody. Um, it's been a while. I've been kind of dragging my feet on editing this footage and filming this intro. Uh, I've been a little stressed uh, about the election, so now that that's over, I feel like I can breathe a little bit, um, at least briefly. Um, and, you know, I've talked to some of my artist friends, and I think a lot of people right now are struggling with justifying making art in the face of so much like pain and suffering and chaos um, but I really heavily believe in drawing as a regenerative uh, kind of like recuperative act but sometimes I lose sight of that and feel like making art is selfish or indulgent or the art doesn't offer any opportunity for like change in the world and I don't really think that art has the potential to like change or um, deeply impact all of the different problems that exist within our culture and, and the world at large but um, I do believe that Personally and interpersonally, art can have an effect on people and can give them hope or make them feel seen. Um, I actually, I got in the mail a book that I had mentioned in my last video, Faux Pas by Amy Silman. It's uh, a collection of essays that she's written over the years, some art reviews and some collected black and white ink drawings. Um, and that reading that book really helped me remember how recuperative drawing can be and that I'm not alone in thinking that <laughs> abstraction and drawing and painting have a kind of regenerative power and it also making art or really doing anything that you love can give your life meaning. Uh, whether that's drawing or making bread or carving spoons. Um, it's important for people to engage with making things because making is a way of creating meaning. And it's also empowering and kind of helps you digest the world. Um, and this book helped me to remember that. So I really recommend it. Uh, she doesn't kind of fall into the trap of using opaque uh, technical uh, theoretical language. So if you're not used to reading like critical theory or art theory, then I wouldn't be worried about this not being accessible to you. She talks about drawing and painting with such clarity and also in a way that can be applied to many things. So yeah, if you're an artist or just a person struggling with a kind of creative nihilism where you don't really feel like there's much of a point in, in making, I would recommend you read this book. I'm trying to establish a more regular sketchbook practice. Uh, the fact that I've started this in 2016 and finished in 2020 is like pretty deplorable. <laughs> um, I'd like to get to where I'm doing sketchbooks, finishing one every year at least. Um, so I'm kind of trying to change the way that I think about sketchbooks. Uh, there are so many times where I come into my studio and I just like don't have the guts to like start a drawing. So for those times, I try and pull out my sketchbook and and work up the nerve to like starting an actual piece on a uh, you know nice piece of paper. <laughs> I'm trying to take more photos of my general everyday life, um, stuff that either has like interesting colors or shape just so I can reference those things in my paintings and drawings and connect my everyday life a little bit more with my abstract works. So this shape that I drew over and over <laughs> was actually like an off cut of some donut dough that I had fried and I thought it was a really cool shape so I took a photo of it and uh, brought it into my sketchbook drawing. I'm trying to also break some of the compositional traps that I fall into. I think that uh, I just usually end up doing like a cluster of uh, text-derived shapes, <laughs> kind of all, you know, scrunched together, uh, and color them in kind of the same flat way. Um, 
especially when it comes to drawing I do that so I'm trying to avoid that a little bit and and experiment with different compositions so I can get a different image with that being said the second drawing that I'm start starting uh, ended up just being a, a cluster of shapes so <laughs> Another thing that I want to do more within my drawings and paintings uh, is collage. Um, so this is me tearing up some notebook paper that I had uh, and kind of trying to draw in response to that collage. Uh, I thought that the notebook paper lines kind of echoed the black lines that I had drawn on the left side of the page. But um, I also recently discovered the Chicago Imagists. Um, I'm thinking about doing a, a, a video delving into the Chicago Imagists and, and what kind of work they made and what they were responding to. But in short, they were active at the same time as pop artists in New York, so 1960s-ish. Um, and they were kind of a foil to pop art, conceptually. So a lot of their references were uh, cartoons, comic strips, outsider artists, uh, a lot of things that kind of reflected a more personal investigation, whereas pop art was more uh, commercial and uh, about the commodification of the image. So yeah, uh, I've been looking at the Chicago Imagists and they do kind of an equal distribution of abstract and, and figurative work. I mean, it's made up of many, many artists, so obviously there's a variation of style, but um, they, most of the works that I was looking at have such an interesting mix of textures and patterns that um, I really wanted to try and borrow some of those textures and patterns, try them on in my drawings and in the sketchbook and see what stuck. I think uh, it's been helpful for me to research the Chicago images some, uh, and also connect with other artists more recently. Um, I started like a studio visit group with a couple of people from my MFA, um, and it's been tough for me to admit because I'm a Scorpio, but <laughs> I am so much better off when I have a community of people um, that I feel like I have a rapport with and that I can, you know, engage in critiques with. Um, because if I'm not doing those things, I feel like I'm going crazy alone in my studio and kind of stagnate a little bit. But talking with other people and also researching groups of artists that I didn't know about uh, can help me to, like, bring in different influences, uh, different opinions, and help me to make sense of all the things that I'm doing. So that's been really helpful for my practice right now. I think community is really important for artists and for everyone, and it's a difficult thing for me to engage in because I'm so withdrawn and uh, have like a fear of being vulnerable with people. Um, so this YouTube is kind of an effort for me to open up a little bit but I'm trying to open up in other ways as well. This uh, texture that I'm drawing is something that I saw in several Chicago Imagists work, uh, which is just kind of like a replication of a, a shiny straight hair texture. And I really love the effect of that. I feel like it makes whatever shape I use it on really three-dimensional and, and real, uh, which is interesting because a lot of my drawings can sometimes appear flat. So it's nice to have a kind of push-pull of three-dimensional and, and flat objects playing with one another in the same, you know, page. <laughs> I'm really glad I finished this sketchbook though. I feel like I'm kind of, you know, closing uh, the book on a time in my life that has been really complicated and difficult and has required a lot of growth for me. You know, in 2016 I was in Buffalo getting my MFA degree, I was in my second year, and felt so confused and lost and so uncertain about myself. Um, so it's really nice to kind of have this documentation of 
my growth as an artist and as a person. Some of the early sketches in this sketchbook you can see are like not as confident, not as bold, uh, the shapes aren't as resolved. I mean, it's kind of what sketchbooks are for is like experimenting and you know trying to find what works for you um but i think that i am much more capable of doing that now than i was then so i've always been interested in text and kind of overlap between language uh written language and, and visual language This is um, some not sketches that uh, I actually did my thesis kind of surrounding knot work. I taught myself a lot of fisherman's knots and um, kinbaku, which is like also known as shibari. It's Japanese bondage knots. Um, so yeah, my thesis was based entirely around knots. I was doing big fat knots that were stuffed. Um, tying body pillows into bondage knot uh, patterns. And so this is me just kind of doing painting studies of the actual diagrams I was using to teach myself how to knot. Uh, I'm really interested in diagrams, the language of diagrams, and how it's kind of a visualization of teaching how to do something in the simplest way possible and in the, the most clear-cut way possible. Um, so then I was really interested in knot diagrams, now I'm really interested in like knitting diagrams and sewing diagrams and just the aesthetics of those things. Um, but I still haven't figured out a way to use it in my work, so... Um, a lot of the sketchbook is me kind of painting or drawing the same shape over and over again to figure out I'm just kind of like fussing with it and trying to figure out what works best for that shape. Um, there's also some proposals in here, like that drawing, the drawings of furniture were for a proposal. I then started on this series of what ended up being comic quilts. Uh, so I referenced a lot of contemporary alternative comics that I own. Um, and kind of reduce them down to just their panel composition and then use that to make quilts. I think I made three or three or four of them uh, and had them in a show all together. But I mean it's not really something I talk about often but contemporary alternative comics have heavily influenced my work and so that's why I connected with the Chicago Imagist so readily <laughs> because they also are so obviously influenced by comic art. Um, so yeah, comics, language, these are all things I'm constantly thinking about. There's the kind of like bang symbol from comics. I started an embroidery project that I never finished with that symbol. My sketchbooks can kind of serve as a, a graveyard for ideas sometimes. <laughs> um, this is more layouts for the comic quilts, just kind of like breaking down measurements to actually compose the quilt. More panel sketches. I really like these as drawings, but I've never thought of a way to bring them out of my sketchbook and make them look like finished pieces. This was a uh, what ended up being a quilt of a time punch clock. Uh, it was like the most complex piecework I've ever done and I had to get all of the measurements exact so that was a learning experience. These are some really loose sketches of a proposal. The same proposal, uh, I mean I wasn't, it, the proposal wasn't accepted but I was really proud of uh, that installation proposal. I got obsessed for a second with the little devil from, I think, Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Um, I used that no problem writing in one of my paintings that I still haven't finished. On the right here I was trying to draw little like latch hooked coasters that I had found at the thrift store. Trying to like draw the pattern of the yarn. Uh, oh, 
when quarantine started, uh, I had the idea to make a zine of essentially a pocket residency. So like anybody who bought the zine could put it on their resume uh, and it would have sort of exercises to get your gears going in the studio. And so many people have suffered from COVID. It just seemed a little tone deaf. Uh, and I realized that really quickly, like everybody's gonna be handling the experience differently. This is me working on more shapes, doing drawings from photographs of bodies and trying to find shapes in those bodies. <clears throat> more shapes. These are more based on letters. Uh, sometimes I mix too much paint and then end up trying to use it on a new painting or in this case on sketches in my sketchbook. So this is me starting with one big shape and then trying to work it out in those smaller shapes beside it. Some of these are very clearly based off of letters. Sometimes when I get my sketchbook out, I just feel like so bad and unmotivated that I just end up writing. Before I start drawing, I just write out like how I'm feeling, how depressed I am or how pointless it feels to draw. And then I start drawing and it kind of works. <laughs> this is when I was visiting Alabama. Um, I drew that chair and that old man. <laughs> uh, another full spread drawing, a little bit more finished. And then this is the one that I showed you guys just a little while ago. Yeah, so I'm really glad I have this evidence of the growth from 2016 to now. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but this is a moleskin sketchbook. Uh, it's an 18 by 24, I think, drawing moleskin. Uh, they're a little pricey, but I've been, I think this is my third one. I really like how thick the pages are. They're almost like manila colored. Um, I hate bright white paper, especially when it's like blue toned white. I just hate the look of that. Uh, so I really like how warm this paper is. It's very, very smooth. The edges are also rounded rather than being in corners, so you don't have to worry about dog earring as much. And marker doesn't bleed too bad through the pages since they're fairly thick, but also like I'm not too nitpicky about marker bleed through. So I recommend these sketchbooks if you haven't tried them. I'll definitely be buying another one soon because I miss not having my sketchbook to draw in. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm gonna try really hard <laughs> to post videos more often on here. I struggle a lot with motivation and with depression so it can sometimes feel stupid or pointless to make videos for other people, but I'm trying to be more vulnerable and share myself a little bit more, just as a, a challenge to my own ways of uh, being. So thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you hopefully next week. Um, yeah, stay safe.